Good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for our webinar on how to build a better Profibus network. My name is Rick Rockershausen. We're just gonna stand by here for a moment while we give folks a minute or two to join. Okay, I think we'll get started. Again, uh, welcome to our seminar. I'm Rick Rockershausen with Grid Connect. First, there we, there I am. <laughs> uh, I'm a, a engineer by training. Uh, I've been in the industry for over 15 years working with Profibus uh, in sales as a trainer and troubleshooting. Uh, so, and our partner in this endeavor has been Procentech. Uh, Grid Connect started in 2003 as a distributor and manufacturer of industrial networking products. And not long thereafter, we, uh, we were partners with Procentech. And over the years, we've, we've had a great relationship with them. And we are currently their highest level of distributor. We are what's known as a master partner. And what that means is we have uh, the highest level of sales support and expertise for uh, Percentech products. Uh, here's a few of our other partners. Uh, this is not all of them, but uh, we, we do have several in the industrial space and in the Profibus world, uh, I would point out uh, Schildnecht and Deutschmann Automation, uh, Schildeck makes uh, wireless Profibus uh, communications and uh, Deutschmann makes gateways. So today we have uh, a number of key topics. Um, the main focus is on how to build a better Profibus network. And by build or design, I do not mean, um, I'm, I'm not, I do not mean which device you should select for your network like IO or drive or whatever. I'm talking about the topology. So how to best design or lay out a Profibus network. Uh, our webinar today will run about one hour long. We'll go through all these topics. We'll at the end have a uh, period for question and answers, probably about 10 minutes, uh, preceded by a brief demo. Uh, if there are a lot of questions at the end, um, we can stay a little longer and answer those. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to stay or drop. This webinar is being recorded, so uh, you can come back and watch or rewatch any part of it uh, at a future date. If you do have questions, go to the bottom of your screen and uh, a Q&A logo should appear. If you click on that, you can type your questions in. Uh, anytime during the presentation, if you have a question, you can do that. And uh, we have, I have a few folks helping me. George Richards and Carla Silveria are watching your questions. If they know the answer to your question, when you type it in, they will just provide you with the answer. If they want to hold that question for our Q&A session at the end, they'll hold it and we'll address it on the air, so to speak. Um, so... Don't, don't be shy about asking questions. We'll get to them, and if we don't answer them all in the webinar, we'll follow up with uh, additional uh, answers. Uh, so for this webinar, I'm assuming you have some uh, Profibus experience, um, but if you don't, you know, I think it's still at a level where you'll be able to follow along pretty well. But along that line, I wanna do a, um, a quick poll and if I can get to it. Oh, I don't know why I'm at the wrong poll. Here we go. So <clears throat> if you wouldn't mind, take a moment and uh, answer our quick poll. I see the answers coming in. Uh, 
Okay. Excellent. I appreciate your input. That helps me as a presenter to know how to target it. It looks like uh, we have a pretty good working knowledge of uh, Profibus in our attendees here. So um, that helps me in moving forward here. So thank you. I'll end the poll. Um, so for our, we'll, we'll jump right into it then. Here comes Profibus networking. So a traditional Profibus network design begins with the daisy chain. Uh, and a daisy chain is accomplished in Profibus usually through a DB9 kind of connector like this where you have two cables that are tied together inside the connector. And so the communication line essentially continues right on through the connector even if this connector is not attached to a, a device, a master or slave device. So if a telegram comes in and this cable is disconnected from, the mass, or from a slave device, the telegram will still continue on through the network. So it's not dependent on a device to forward the message on, on down the cable. It's all connected essentially as one long wire or daisy chain. It's based on uh, RS-485 half duplex communications. This means that when a telegram or a message is on the bus on the cable, uh, there's only one message that lives on the cable at a time. So the master will, for example, write outputs to uh, address nine and address nine will respond with, after a little quiet period, the message has to go down the whole cable. Uh, once it's sure that everyone has, has received the, the message, then the slave that is address nine will answer the message with, uh, for example, here are my outputs or inputs rather. So write, <laughs> write outputs, read inputs are sort of the, the data exchange in Profibus. Uh, the the uh, daisy chain came about because of uh, you know, wanting better controls and also to reduce cabling costs. Back in the early days of control systems, um, everything was uh, a home run wire from whatever sensor or device was out there. So the cablings coming into the control cabinets were enormous and uh, error prone and uh, and costly. So the daisy chain allows you to have really a single cable that connects everything together and saves cabling costs and money. So let's take, for example, we have a, a network that we want to create and it consists of one master with 40 slave devices running at 1.5 megabits a second with 300 meters of cable. Uh, so you could just create a big long daisy chain like this and start wiring up all uh, 40 slave devices. You notice the addresses that I have in the circles, they're not dependent on your position on the bus. You could have address 15 followed by four because the message goes everywhere. So even if uh, the, the device is all the way at the end and, and the message was for the first device, that message for address 15 still goes all the way to the end of the, the bus. So it goes everywhere. So it looks like we're done. We have our network. It's all daisy chained together. Uh, what, you know, it looks like we have a Profibus network. However, we do have rules in Profibus and the rules state that you can have 32 devices per segment. You can have 200 me meters of cable per segment when you're running at our speed of 1.5 megabits. So the slower you go, the longer your cable segment lengths, the faster you go, the shorter they are. And we also need terminating resistors at the beginning and end of, our, of each segment. Uh, we, have, we have them at the beginning and end of our network. So how do we create a segment? The solution is a repeater. So we've added a repeater now. We have two segments. Each one has 20 slave devices. Uh, each one has 150 or so meters of cable. So we're done. And in fact, we could be done. In a lot of cases, this is how Profibus network design has been done over the years. I've seen plenty of networks laid out this way, and they work very well for a very long time. Um, however, stuff does begin to go wrong. What could go wrong? All kinds of stuff goes wrong, as not only do we have all of these outside influences on our network. 
uh, power lines and grounding and shielding problems, EMI or EMC interference, not understanding all the Profibus rules like one meter uh, rules, uh, reflections from interference. We also have 40 plus connections that were hand wired by uh, people probably not using the proper stripping tools. And so we have some wire nicks here and there that over time begin to uh, turn into wire breaks or near wire breaks. So we have communications coming in and out. And the thing with these big networks with long segments with a lot of devices is if one device fails, the whole segment fails, pretty much. And the also, also the other confusing thing is if we have an error here, let's say there's a, a problem on this device at address 13, the devices at the other end of the bus are the ones that are gonna have the problems because the further away you are from the problem in Profibus, the worse it gets. And so if you have a lot of devices and a lot of cable, it gets really bad. And if you shorten those segments up and if you get fewer devices per segment, you will have a more reliable and robust uh, Profibus network. So repeaters are, are the way it's traditionally been done. You just keep adding uh, repeaters. And I just wanna talk about them for a moment so we understand how they work. At the uh, traditional repeater, this you have two segments. You have one uh, segment at the top and one segment at the bottom. Uh, you'll also notice these are labeled in uh, in the Siemens world as A1, B1, and A1 prime, B1 prime. So you can daisy chain through the top of a repeater. It doesn't have to be at the end of the cable. You can daisy chain through and come out the bottom and create like a, a T, if you will, or vice versa, daisy chain at the bottom and, and end at the top and T that way. So you can make T's, you can make uh, X's, however you wanna think of it. But the telegrams that are on this segment Come, come to the repeater, they continue on this cable and they come out this little monitoring port. It's uh, depending on the repeater tied to one of the two segments. So there is a, on most repeaters, there's a little DB9 and it connects to uh, one of the two segments. In, in this case, this uh, DB9 is connected to the top segment electrically. So I'm just like listening to, you can listen to this cable with one of your troubleshooting tools and uh, there's isolation in here. So if there's a problem on one segment or the other, it doesn't pass through. So you see this little oscilloscope -ish, uh, drawing over here with all the noise. If this comes in on this uh, segment two, it hits this isolation, the repeater, it stops. So this does not come through. The repeater regenerates the message and sends it out on the other cable, fully boosted. So the signal is a strong signal. So if you've gone down as signals trans, uh, traverse the cable, they get to the end, the further the, they, they are away from the device that sent it, the lower the voltage level, so they drop as they traverse the cable. And when it hits the repeater, it boosts it back up and sends it out on the other side. So that's kind of how repeaters work. Um, and so if you do have trouble, you can come in with your uh, troubleshooting tool like Profitrace, uh, the famous tool from Procentec. You can connect your tool and you can check uh, to see where the problem is, who has the reflections. Now, in this case, uh, I'm looking at the top segment. There's no problem up there. So I would have to move my Profitrace to a connector on a device on segment two in order to see this noise because this isolation does not allow me to see the noise on the other segment. So following uh, my example, if you, if you add more segments, your networks become more reliable. The problems stay within the segment. So if I do have a problem with address seven, it's not gonna show up on segment three or segment four or segment one. It's gonna stay within segment two. And to get this uh, segmentation, uh, it's relatively cheap. You know, repeaters aren't, aren't too expensive to add to your networks, a couple hundred bucks and you've made a more reliable network. <clears throat> so now we've gone from two segments to uh, four segments. Uh, I think I missed a slide here. Uh, I did. Well, uh, you can create uh, star topologies using uh, Profi Hubs. 
Um, now, a Profi Hub has five channels and a single uh, main channel. So I can connect my PLC to the main. And then I can create new segments from the other uh, channels. These are all uh, full segments, you know, 32 devices, uh, 200 meters of cable in our little example network. And so I can measure the segments all from one place. Now I could have daisy chained together some repeaters at the top and made T's and come out to all of these segments with standard repeaters. But that's a lot of uh, wiring. You have to pay attention to rules. You need more power supplies. You know, if I would need five repeaters or four repeaters to do that. Um, and so you need four power supplies here with a, with a Profi Hub. You can do it with a single uh, repeater. And uh, so this was a new innovation that Percentech uh, added many years ago to kind of help make different topologies uh, than your standard uh, long daisy chain. So you can do these star and T topologies. You can even isolate individual devices. As I mentioned, uh, now we have a DP backbone. We can tie Profi hubs together. We can put our devices out here either alone on a segment. Uh, they don't spread to other lines. So in, a, in the most reliable configuration, every device on its own segment. Now there are some um, industries where they like to add and remove devices from networks like pharmaceuticals. So depending on what uh, pharmaceutical they're uh, building, they can add or remove devices to help make that formula. So it's helpful to have uh, individual channels because you can add and remove and not disturb any other channel. But also it's highly reliable because if there's a problem with this device, it stays within this segment. And when there's only two devices on a segment, even if there's a problem with this cable, this device is probably still gonna keep running. So to talk about uh, segmentation in, in summary, adding segments, creates, uh, the benefits are, it creates highly reliable networks. You can do a lot more things with segmentation than just a daisy chain. You can create star and T tree topologies. You can isolate problem areas. You get short circuit protection. If you've got a single device on a segment by itself, there are going to be short circuits there and it won't take down the whole network. And as I mentioned, it's possible to add or uh, remove or insert devices during operation. Um, but it does present some challenges. So <clears throat> when you come in with a tool to measure your network or troubleshoot your network, when you have multiple segments, you have to go to every segment with your tool uh, and check it. And so this is a problem, especially like in the warehouse industry. If you've got big, long uh, networks that are hundreds of meters long and you need to measure that network or troubleshoot it. Uh, you know, it's a lot of work just to go between locations to do that checking. Uh, there are uh, more cables involved when you create these alternate um, topologies. So the star and the tree will be more cabling. It's not like we've home run. There wasn't a home run back to the main cabinet anymore but we have these tree branches that are a little more cable than just one long daisy chain, but, it, but it's not really that much more uh, expensive cable wise. And there are more devices in the network because a repeater is a device. So there's more devices. Uh, and when you do these alternate um, topologies, the drawings can get, confusion, can, can get confusing. Uh, and it's, uh, harder to baseline network signals. When you want to measure a network, you have to go now between, um, you know, multiple segments. And if you're using like Profitrace, for example, uh, you generate a report on each segment. And so if you want a single report to represent the whole network, um, you know, you need to try to tie those reports together. And there's a mechanism to do that, but it's, it's you know, it's a bit of effort and work to do that. And it's really hard to kind of get an understanding of where's my network today. So when I come back in a month or six months to check it again, to do my preventative maintenance, how does it look now? And so all of these things, uh, segmentation 
um, can make a little bit more challenging. So here's how the Combrix comes into the, the equation. As I mentioned, uh, the standard repeaters were first. If you wanted to do these star kinds of topologies, you had to daisy chain the top together and then go out to the field with your channels. Uh, we have lots of terminating resistant resistors. We have problems with cabling, with the one meter rules. It's a lot harder to install four devices than to install one device. Um, you have a lot of power supply problems and it's, it's a lot harder installation. Then the Profi Hubs came along. Uh, this is an example of a Profi Hub A5. Uh, this one has five channels in a D IP65 enclosure. There are many other uh, variants on Profi Hubs these days, including ones with uh, fiber optics and fiber optic rings. So you can uh, do a lot more with Profi Hubs. If you, um, there's no asset management, you can't check remotely with a Profi Hub how your network is doing. Uh, but you do get this single uh, power supply. And then the Combrix came along, which kind of did the best of both worlds. Combrix gives you uh, your segmentation, so you can create um, a Profi Hub in a sense. Uh, you get Profi Trace given to you in a web server from the head station, and you can do lots of other things. There are many other modules available, so we can go from uh, DP to PA, we can make a DP PA coupler. We can go from DP to fiber, so an OLM, like an optical link module. So by just adding these additional modules uh, and you can build up um, whatever you need to in, in your Combrick, uh, you can address all kinds of uh, Profi bus networking challenges, uh, topology challenges. So it's modular, you get the multimedia, DP, PA and fiber, you get Profi Trace over Ethernet, and you get some additional things like if you're into uh, Industry 4.0, there's an OPC server where you can serve up um, information to the cloud uh, and act on it there. So when we talk about measuring Profi bus networks, uh, we have our portable tools from Percentech. Uh, Profi Trace in the famous blue suitcase has been around the longest. It's still our top seller. Uh, recently, in the last few years, they've introduced Osiris, which has a more modern interface for troubleshooting Profi bus. Uh, it's Mercury, rather, and it has the Osiris software running on it. Uh, there's different versions of Mercury with a larger screen and other accessories that you can get. Uh, and it has a more modern uh, interface for troubleshooting Profi uh, bus and also allows you to do industrial Ethernet networks like Profinet or Ethernet IP. So uh, the tool set in, is uh, continuing to evolve and these portable tools allow you to go around and check your entire uh, facility uh, for Profi bus or Profinet problems if you have the Mercury. Um, so troubleshooting is certainly the main, the main thing that happens with Profi bus everything works great until it doesn't. And then everybody needs a tool to figure out what went wrong. And we're happy to do that. Um, the preventative maintenance side, when, pe when people get these tools, uh, you know, it's difficult because planned downtime is limited. And usually there's other things to do when you have downtime, like fixing uh, devices and other things or moving things around uh, than to go measure your Profibus networks. So, and moreover, if it's downtime, a lot of times this, the process is stopped. And so Profibus might be running, but the signals that you see during uh, a stopped process might be different than when all the drives and motors and everything else are active and, the, and things are stopping and starting, uh, which can cause interference on your Profibus communication cables. So, um, so even doing preventative maintenance during downtime is challenging. Most places uh, struggle to even get downtime. There's always pressure to run things 24 seven. And, uh, you know, again, I mentioned this earlier, to establish baseline reports and merge those together with the tools is a challenge. And so in order to do either of these steps, either of these uh, troubleshooting or preventative maintenance, there's a bunch of steps involved. 
the number one thing that anyone should do when, when doing tr troubleshooting or preventative maintenance is to locate the drawings of your Profibus network so you know what you're measuring. You need to understand what's connected to what and where it is. You need to go find where those control cabinets are or enclosures that have every repeater because we have to measure every segment. In many companies, you're required to put on uh, appropriate safety gear. So maybe not during PM if things are powered down, but, um, but if you're troubleshooting, uh, you gotta suit up and suiting up takes a lot of time. Uh, in many cases, I've been in facilities where people are putting on their safety gear and they have to tape off the area. They have to file paperwork. Uh, you know, it could take anywhere from a half hour to 40 minutes just to get in the cabinet to connect your Profi Trace to find out is there a problem with this uh, network that's caused by Profibus. So the safety gear issue and the safety things um, take time and they put pressure on on uh, on downtimes. Another biggie is a lot of folks have through the years gone through our Profibus troubleshooting and maintenance training and um, we hear this a lot that they take the training and then they come back from training which is involves a lot of great hands-on stuff and they put the uh, profi trace um, you know in the drawer and wait and a year or six months later when the problem happens they're panicking they pull out their tool and they're trying to remember their troubleshooting training how does this work again <laughs> how does profibus work again and uh, so that is also a challenge, uh, remembering just what to do. And that causes delays in, in, in uh, resolving problems too. Again, we have to measure every segment. So where we're spread out uh, physically or uh, geographically, if you will, it takes a while to even go around and measure everything. And if we have multiple networks in our building and we're doing PM, you know, we have to repeat all of that, those steps um, for each network. And lastly, if, uh, if, there's, if we're troubleshooting and the experts aren't in the building, well, we need to call them in because if no one's been trained and no one knows how to use these tools, it's really difficult sometimes to understand what you're looking at and how to uh, resolve problems quickly. So, Combrix gives you the answers to all those problems. <laughs> it is Profitrace in a web browser. So now, I can connect to the head station of the Profi, uh, of the Combrix just by typing the IP address of that head station in a web browser and I will have Profitrace 24 seven right there in front of me. I don't have to put on safety gear. Um, I don't have any setup time to start troubleshooting. I am troubleshooting from the instant I type in the IP address in my uh, browser. The experts don't have to be in the building. If you can get them access to this IP address through your corporate WAN, uh, they can check out the uh, information provided in the Profitrace OE and help you troubleshoot. Uh, the big one, it keeps troubleshooting training fresh. So if you have Combrix and you have these uh, ability to check your networks daily or weekly or however often you like to do it, the point is it's easy to do. Profitrace looks and feels very similar to the portable tool. So it keeps the training fresh. It keeps how Profibus works fresh in your mind. It keeps you uh, aware of what things to keep be alerting, uh, alerted, keep alerted to. And speaking of alerting, um, you can be alerted by Combrix without having to be there sitting there watching it. It can alert you via email, uh, via SNMP, that's Simple Network Management Protocol. That is the protocol uh, used in the IT world but is rapidly gaining adoption in the industrial uh, world. You can be alerted via an IO input or output. So there are additional modules that you can get for Combrix that are IO relays or inputs and outputs and you can turn them on and off in response to problems. There's also a relay on the head station that, that comes there, so you don't need an extra card if you just want a single uh, I.O., you can do that. And there is a network condition indicator tool that allows you to, um, the, the network condition indicator tool allows you to monitor all your Combricks at once from a single screen. So if you had multiple Combricks in your facility and you didn't want to keep flipping between multiple tabs of a web browser, 
to check each one individually, you have sort of a screen that rolls them all up into one and you can see everything at once. Uh, with Combrix, you have uh, the ability to add up to 10 modules, uh, high speed modules. So I call those segment modules like a DP uh, module here on the left, the left two, the middle are the PA for Profibus process automation. Uh, and the, the ones on the right are for fiber optics. Uh, so you can mix and match these however is appropriate, uh, up to 10 in a single Combrix. And on the DP uh, modules, you have the option of having an oscilloscope or no oscilloscope. Uh, the oscilloscope is what you need to see signals, to see voltage levels, to see, to really to see most problems that folks worry about. So most of the time we're selling um, the scope module version. There are versions without scope. If you're just trying to create, for example, uh, a Profi hub that doesn't have the, the scope monitoring. So that's uh, sort of how Combrix uh, is laid out. Now let's take a look at how we can use it to improve our network uh, design. Uh, one thing you can do with Combrix is create cable redundancy. So it's, it's more, even additional reliability along with segmentation. We now have this DP backbone that I showed earlier only times three. So if one cable breaks, uh, one of the other two will pick it up. Now you can actually have up to 10 way redundancy with Combrix. I don't know anyone who's ever done 10 or five or even three. Uh, most of the time, if they're gonna do redundant cables, it's just uh, a two. And uh, depends on the, you know, of course, how, how important it is to have this uh, network up and running. So, and then from there, you can go out to the field and drop off onto your segments where you have your devices. You can have, again, individual devices on a segment. You can have daisy chain devices on a segment. So you can create these different topologies. Um, I mentioned the PA. So you can also uh, do Profibus PA with uh, Combrix. So you can have your DP segment here with your master and then have uh, different PA segments. Um, a couple of unique features here. Uh, one is you can run on the DP side on baud rates up to 12 megabits. So, you know, most uh, DPPA couplers that are in the market uh, allow you to run at very slow DP speeds because PA runs at a very slow fixed speed. There is no, you don't get to choose the baud rate on Profibus PA, it is fixed. Um, I can't remember the exact uh, speed. I think it's 34K roughly. Um, and then, uh, so the, the DP side on, on those third party couplers are usually much slower, like only up to double what the PA uh, speed is. So here you can have your DP uh, devices running up full speed, even up to 12 megabits. We have uh, integrated the termination in the PA uh, modules. You can create separate PA loops and have PA, your PA instruments out here. You can use an FTD DTM application to do asset management, connect through ethernet, through the head station to do that uh, COM DTM work with your uh, devices for configuration. And so if you had a lot of PA, you could add up to nine um, PA modules. You always have to have a DP module or something with DP on it, like a fiber to, um, because all masters are on DP. So slave, the DP slave network is separate from the DP master. The PA slave network is different from the PA master. Um, yeah, and then you get your profi trace and you get a PA oscilloscope, which is really an awesome thing because a lot of times these are all closed devices. There's nowhere to connect uh, to check anything. You have to connect at the coupler. It's very difficult to measure PA um, networks even with a good tool. And with Profitrace, you can do that right from the web browser. I'm, I'm sorry, with Combrix, you can do that right from the web browser. And just to talk about fiber for a minute, there's a bunch of topologies supported there. So you can do star and tree and line um, and a mixture of topologies. The new one that they've added in the last few years is the ring topology. Uh, these work now on multi-mode or single mode fiber. So depending on which uh, type of fiber you choose, you can go different lengths. Uh, you can go further with single mode than you distances with single mode than you can with multi-mode, but they're all supported now with Combrix. 
So here's uh, a typical um, equivalencies that you can do with Combrix. Uh, if you have any of these active terminators in your network, um, you can replace those with a, a single head station and a single module. Um, if you had a uh, Percentec term active terminator, it looks like this. You'll notice that Percentec gives you the DB9 connector on the active terminator. So if you did need to come in with a Profi trace, you can measure your network uh, there. If you want to replace a repeater or what's equivalent to a repeater, you need two segments on your Combrix. Um, segment one would be like equivalent to the top of the repeater and segment two is like the bottom of the repeater. And this, of course, is an example of a Percentec repeater. And then if you wanted to create a Profi Hub, for example, a B5R, uh, here we have five channels plus the main, so six total segments. And here we have six uh, segment modules on our uh, Profi uh, Combrix, that one for each of the five over here and one for the main. All right, so if we're designing a new network and uh, here's our one I showed earlier with the Profi Hub, so we can do the same thing obviously with the Combrix and, and make a star topology with our 40 devices. Um, let's design a new network. Let's say we have a conveyance system in a big warehouse, for example, and uh, it's 400 meters long and it's 50 meters from here to here and another 400 meters here. So we got about 850 meters of cable. Obviously, we're going to need some repeaters in here. And how would you design this, let's say, now with Combrix? So first, here's our devices. We've got devices all over the place on this conveyance system. Some are drives, some are sensors, some are actuators. And now we want to go ahead and uh, design how we're going to connect all these together and segment our network. So first of all, we can add some Combrix and create a DP backbone, kind of run it through the middle here so we're within distance of all of these things. So none of these lengths here are more than 200 meters. You know, obviously if 200 is here, these are all shorter lengths. And uh, then we can branch out from there and connect all our devices. So we have our DP backbone and we have our devices connected. And uh, we have a nice segmented network with, in some cases, you know, we have, I think we have seven devices over here. That's the most loaded segment. Um, so we have relatively few devices per segment. This will be a very reliable network, easy to check. I can check it from uh, checking three Combrix and I'd be able to check the signals on all segments sitting at my desk. Uh, let's take a, a case where we have a mixed media network, like we have a, a more of a SCADA type application where we have a DP area, um, one, another area of, with more DP devices over here, another area over here with three more, or we'll call it area three, another area four over here. And then we have a bunch of PA devices uh, in, in an area down here on the right. And geog uh, geographically, these are physically, they're, they're more distantly spaced, uh, this side of the screen than this side. So here's how we might design that with Combrix. First of all, you uh, lay out your Combrix here. And you can see we've done our DP connections over here and these three areas are all connected uh, and then to get over to our distant remote area, we use a fiber optic. So this is still DP connected to our master. And then we can drop off our PA um, segment here with our devices here. And then uh, we can even add another DP uh, segment over here on the remote side of the plant. So you see the flexibility you get with Combrix in designing your networks. It's, uh, it's, gives you the highest degree of flexibility and the best monitoring and the most reliable networks by um, laying it out in, in fashions like this. Uh, let's talk about retrofitting a network. Let's say you had a single segment network that had an active terminator. Well, you have kind of two choices here. You can uh, just add this Combrix to the beginning of the network. Um, why might you want to do that? Well, if you're putting a Combrix in, one of the challenges is you need especially in a retrofit situation is you need an ethernet connection. Most of the time in the control cabinet where the PLC is, there is already ethernet there. 
So if you come out of your master in the cab cabinet, daisy chain through the module on the Combrix and then go out to the field. So you just kind of add it here. It's, it's easy, you don't have to um, add ethernet. And your eyes, if you will, I, I'm, you're gonna start seeing these on the diagram, are now looking at uh, the segment here so I can see what's going on on this cable with this module on this uh, Combrix. The other way, of course, is to go ahead and replace the active terminator. Now, in this case here, termination is off because I'm daisy chained through. And when I replace an active terminator on my module here, I have termination turned on. And now I'm an active terminator. I don't have any role on the network. I'm not a repeater. I'm just sitting at the end being an active terminator and the eyes of the Combrix are looking at the cable more or less from the other end. But what you will see is, is the same thing. You'll be able to see uh, any disturbances on the cable and everything else. I don't know, we don't have any questions come in. I was just doing a quick check. So if anyone has questions, don't forget to uh, type them in. George and Carla are standing by. Um, here's, here's an example, kind of taking this, uh, amping this up a little bit. You know, we still have a traditional three segment daisy chain kind of network. And in order to cover three segments, I need three scope modules in order to see them. So I can put them in two ways. I could put one at the beginning in the control cabinet like we just talked about, and the other one um, replacing the second repeater. Or my option is, of course, to replace this one and replace this one. Oftentimes the decision of which one to replace comes down to where where is my nearest ethernet drop and what makes the most sense. So. Um, you know, that's, that's really the only challenge with retrofitting is where is Ethernet? Um, this device is slightly bigger than an active terminator from Siemens, not much. Uh, the Combrix here, as you can see, is slightly bigger than, a little more bigger than, than the, uh, this is compared to the active terminator. But it's a little bit, little bit wider. Uh, that's the main issue. It's a slightly wider. So... Uh, if you're replacing one, how much room you have on the DIN rail is also a consideration. And let's take this uh, a little bit further. We have this network with seven segments. And <clears throat> segment one here, we see we've daisy chained through the top. So this is all one uh, segment. And then segment two, three, four, five, six. And then at the end here, we have another daisy chained kind of T connection. So we have a few options here on how to, um, how to fit Combrix into this network. For example, I could replace the first repeater um, and then every other repeater. So when I connect this uh, repeater, I have eyes on the top segment uh, from this module and I have eyes on segment two uh, from this module. I don't need to replace this one. I can replace this one. Now I have eyes on segment four and segment three and I can skip this one and replace this one and I have eyes on segment five and segment six. And then when I get down here to this, uh, my, my odd segment, my extra one, I have a choice I could replace either active terminator. In this case, I've chosen this one, but of course, obviously you could have chosen this one. And then, you know, the same, the same thing goes, we could switch that up, replace the active terminator up here and then start replacing uh, uh, terminators. I'm sorry, replacing repeaters, uh, just starting here with segment two and three on this Combrix and, and so on. So the other option, of course, would have been to put this one in the control cabinet and left the active terminator here. You could have put uh, this Combrix over here in the control cabinet with the PLC. So now I'd like to uh, switch over to the Combrix uh, demo and I'll just take me just a second. I have at my uh, desk a, a training kit that we use for demos and Pro Bus troubleshooting and maintenance training. And I have a Combrix in there and I'm gonna let you see what that looks like. So here comes my uh, Combrix. And Combrix gives you a lot of information about uh, itself as a system and also about your Pro Bus uh, network. So you could see here, I am, um, here's the IP address of my Combrix. I just type that into my web browser and I pull up this, uh, it serves up this web page for us. And 
here I can see this is what's called the channel list. So I can see my Combrix configuration that I have in my training kit here. I have a head station. I have a two channel repeater that doesn't have a scope. So there is this uh, module available. I don't have any devices connected to it. I have a, a single channel scope module. Uh, here's channel one down here. And I have these devices that are uh, sending telegrams that are being received on this side of this scope repeater. And then I have a PA module. And again, I don't have any PA devices in my training kit hooked up. So this tells me if I had multiple scope modules in a repeater, I'd know which devices are on which channel. Uh, it's kind of a nice thing because when you use Profitrace and you look at a live list, for example, here's the live list, I can't tell which side of a repeater or which segment these devices are on. All I see is what address they're at. So this is a similar view than you would see, that you would see with the Profitrace portable tool. Um, what I'm showing you here is something called the tag name. So you're able to uh, give each address your own name. So you could say, for example, I have a Wago IO in cabinet four, and this stays in the Combrix. And anytime you come here, there's no trying to remember. You don't have to refer to your drawing. What is the device at address 23? I, I'm not very good at remembering addresses, not even my own. So I don't know how you could remember a network full of addresses and what's there. But uh, the tag names help you with that and you're able to do that. I can even name my PLC. So this is the master. It's always a red uh, background. Uh, green backgrounds mean uh, device in data exchange. And uh, um, the blue means it's a uh, slave device. Here I have also a slave device that doesn't have a green background. What that means is that this device is, is uh, not in the PLC. It's not in the... Um, it's not in the program of the PLC to know what address 55 is. So it's on the bus, it's powered up, but it is not uh, in the program. So it's not in data exchange. Now I can turn off a device and you will see uh, that just like Profitrace, when the device goes offline, um, it turns yellow and that yellow means the device was there and now it's not. Um, yeah, I can go and look at statistics just like with Profitrace, and I can see, for example, how many devices have been lost and how many times have they been lost. So address 42 here has been lost two times. Uh, I can see how many syncs each of these devices took. I can see uh, retries. So a retry happens when a device goes offline and then comes back on. Um, before it's declared lost, you get retries. Uh, illegal messages. I had some illegal messages on uh, address 18. And you can even check things like when did, when were there diagnostics. Here I had some internal diagnostics on address uh, 56. I'm sorry, 66. And so on. So this is, you can even name what your network is. I called this the punching line, for example. Uh, Profi um, Combrix does allow you to assign multiple networks. So you can use one Combrix and actually cover different physical networks by monitoring them. Uh, it's not done very often, but you can do it like here would be the live list for a network. This network I called the bending line. And then if you wanted to monitor other networks, you can do that. It's not done very often, but it is there and it, it is done from time to time. Um, you can do message recording just like with Profitrace. Now there isn't a message viewing feature within, um, within Combrix, but you do have, uh, the files are recorded and I can say what I wanna record. So I wanna record lost stations and illegals here. So let's take a look at this one where I have a lost station. I can just click on this message file. You'll see it download down here onto my PC that's connected to the Combrix. I can double click this file now and it will open up in a second, <laughs> Profitrace. Uh, and I can view the messages in Profitrace. So I can come in here and then if I look at my messages, here are all the messages right when that problem happened, a thousand messages before, a thousand messages after. I can find where that actual problem is and I can uh, look for a station lost and I'll just search down for that problem. And here it is. Here I had uh, master 
trying to reach this device. It tried five times and after the fifth time, the fifth repeat or retry, it was declared lost. And so every cycle thereafter, um, that device gets a sync message until it comes back online. So anyway, just a quick uh, how you can use this from your desk without having to go out and use Profitrace. You can download Profitrace even if you don't own it, if you have a Combrix and you can still use it to view messages. Um, and then I can look at oscilloscope images. Uh, these other uh, things here are logs. So you have a log and status. Uh, I, did, I won't go through those unless we have uh, time. Um, you can look at the oscilloscope images. Now here I have signals that I would say do not look very good. I can see I have uh, sort of this up and down uh, harmonic or sinus wave that dampens out. Any of you that have taken our Profibus troubleshooting maintenance training would know that this is a missing termination. And here, the thing with Combrix is you can see multiple stations all at the same time. Here I have uh, address five, this is our master. And this is address 23 and 42 and so on. So you can see all the slave by address. I can see which ones are in data exchange, which one is lost. So this is an old slave image, it's not refreshing. You see this, this is a refresh of the image. There's nothing really uh, going on here because it's still powered off. Uh, I'll turn it back on and you'll see it go to green. If I want to zoom in on this message, I can click it and it will take me to a screen where I can look at it a little closer. Now, the one thing you can't do uh, with Combrix that you can with Profitrace is to measure the reflection to figure out where the problem is. So Profitrace still has its, um, its place. And the point is that Combrix is your watchdog. It, it narrows the problem down very quickly for you where it is. You still may need to go out to the, to the field with your Proby Trace if you need to measure a reflection, for example. Um, but, you know, nine times out of 10, you can still do it without ever having to get Proby Trace out. And what, what happens is, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but the, the device that has the problem, uh, the devices furthest away from it feel the problem, and the one that has it, uh, doesn't have it. So here's my scope repeater on my Combrix, and these signals are pretty clean. And if I, that is where the missing termination is. So the missing termination is here. It has the problem, but you don't see it here. So if I'm troubleshooting this network, I would say, hey, this one looks the best. Why don't we check the, acti uh, the terminating resistor on the scope repeater? And sure enough, it is off when it should be on. And so I'll fix that problem and you can see the signals clean right up and we know we've got it. <clears throat> so you can do that. You also have your bar graph images and you can see uh, the voltages from each device. Um, and so this is also very valuable because you can baseline your uh, network uh, voltage levels. If you see them starting to get close to this red line, that is sort of the danger zone. And it might mean that either you have too much cable, you have too many devices on that network, you have devices that are aging and their, their voltages are dropping as dirt and dust and age happen with electronics, uh, things happen. We had one client tell us they could tell when a particular brand of drive was about to fail because the voltage levels would start to get low. And so they could do their PMs and replace those drives uh, before they became a problem. Um, and then you can check for oscilloscope errors. Oftentimes the problem with Profitrace is, you know, you can't catch an error when it happens. Uh, you know, you have these transient problems that happen now with uh, my particular training kit. I didn't create a transient error on the scope image, but oftentimes it will catch it and you can see uh, what the problem was um, because it, it recorded the problem with the, the image. For PA, if you had PA, you can get the, the measurements of noise, amplitude, and jitter. Um, and you can also, so this is a great way to check your PA networks. Um, and then you can set up all of your uh, access over here, your IP addresses, your 
passwords, your email uh, configuration. So if I wanted to be alerted to problems via email, this is where I would set that up. This takes a long time to load for whatever reason this page, I don't know why, but it will be here in a second. Okay, almost here. So here it is, and I can see which events I want to be alerted to via email and which ones go into my log. And if I go to my system log, I can see um, events recorded for whenever these problems happen, like station loss, sinks, illegals. So all of the uh, communications with um, via email or um, OPC or all those other methods are all done through some of these configuration uh, screens. You can even set up passwords so people can get in here, only look at things and not be able to change any of the settings. So you can have an administrative password, a user password, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff uh, in Combrix that uh, are possible. And I'm just checking to see if we have any questions. Either this means that I uh, lost everybody or that you all know everything you need to know. I don't see any questions uh, being asked, so that's good. But I will uh, go back to the presentation here and we will open it up uh, for questions. So if you uh, are on the call and you have a question, you wanna uh, ask it live, uh, what you can do is, um, oh, also if you wanted to check out a demo on your own, there is a live demo running all the time, 24 seven, that you can access at combrix.percentech.com. If you all get off of this uh, webinar and jump on this at the same time, there might be you know, an overload condition of you know, 50 people jumping on a Combrix at once. It will still work, it just might be super slow. So spread it out over the next few days, check it out. It's a great demo and you can play with this a little more on your own. Okay, onto the Q&A. So if you'd like to ask a question, please um, open up the participants panel at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see uh, participants. And then if you can raise your hand, uh, we will unmute you and you can ask your question. Does anyone have a question? Uh, we have a question, training availability on software. Um, so, I'm not sure uh, what software you're talking about. So the web server, um, we do have a, a poll that we'll take. Actually, this is a good time to do it. Uh, I'm gonna run another poll real quick. And here we go. So we do have training available for uh, Profibus troubleshooting and maintenance, which teaches you how to use Profitrace software. Uh, we do have a, a training available for Combrix. Uh, which is like a one day training, which assumes you've already had the Profibus training, um, which gets into all of the, the screens about um, that I was just showing you in depth and, and we get into some networks and show you how you would troubleshoot a network with Combrix that has multiple Combrix and multiple segments. Uh, and I'm seeing a few folks answering the poll here that they um, would like help with a number of things, training, troubleshooting, network design, uh, Combrix in-depth training, other Profibus stuff, and a few that are good for now. That's good. So I don't know, uh, Dong, if that asked your, answered your, uh, Duck, I'm sorry, uh, if that answered your question. Combrix software, yeah. So yeah, that, that would probably be the one day um, Combrix training we do have. If you would like to find out more about that, uh, you can contact myself or any of the folks on our, on our sales team. Uh, here they are. And uh, so if you need help with any of this stuff, if you want uh, to schedule a time to go through your network drawings and talk about how Comrix might be able to help you, I'd be happy to do that. Um, just reach out and we'll get some time scheduled. Are there other questions? Okay, uh, I have a question from Alfredo, uh, do you require any PLC program changes on the hardware configuration when going from standard repeaters to a hub or Combrix? <clears throat> so uh, the answer is no, you do not. Um, 
a repeater is transparent to the PLC program and a Profi Hub is transparent to the PLC program. Uh, it doesn't know it's there. Uh, just like our very first slide where we added a repeater, we didn't have to change uh, the PLC program to add the repeater. It's just doing the, the message forwarding, if you will, and amplifying the signals. Um, and then, so you don't have to change your PLC program to add a Profi Hub, which is basically just a multi-channel repeater or a Combrix, which is a multi-channel uh, repeater as well. However, if you do do fiber, for example, uh, you may have to change some uh, bus parameters because fiber optics uh, add some delay. So when a message gets sent and the time you have to wait for the response to come back, that, that quiet period and some of those other bus parameters may need to be modified. Um, so, so with that, uh, you can uh, change your PLC program to, uh, to use fiber. That's, that's true with any OLM. So any, any product that puts fiber on your Profibus network, you may have to change the PLC program. And there's a third reason, or there's another reason why you may uh, change your PLC program because there's, a, there's another feature which I didn't talk about today. And that is that the Profi Hubs have a, uh, what's called a diagnostic feature. So they are sort of capturing a lot of the same stuff that you can do with Combrix not the scope images, but the statistics, uh, the errors and that sort of stuff. It can, it can send those to the PLC. Uh, and, but the, in that case, you have to assign the Profi Hub uh, an address and put it in as a slave device in your network. So it's possible, it is done. There's even a feature where you can add those diagnostic Profi Hubs uh, to a Combrix, which we can do another webinar. Uh, Percentech did a webinar and showed how this works. So I kind of took it back a little more basic level. If you want to know how to do a diagnostic uh, slave with Combrix or with your PLC, we have uh, stuff for that. But in standard usage, where you're just using it as a repeater, you do not have to change the PLC program. So thank you for that question, uh, Alfredo. Uh, Hosu, I'm not sure if I said your name right. I apologize. Will we share the presentation? Yeah, we will send out uh, a link where you can uh, rewatch and share this presentation with um, with your colleagues or yourself. Any other questions? All right, well, I appreciate everyone's uh, attention and time today. Uh, again, as I mentioned, if you need help with any of those things, you, you answered in our poll. Uh, I'll end that, all right. Um, we have uh, a lot of folks interested in some help, so that's great. Uh, reach out to myself. Uh, you have my email, you have my, my phone number on the front slide. You can reach any of our sales team by calling our main line here, 245-1445 and you have everyone's uh, email addresses. We work as a team, so uh, all these folks are, are knowledgeable in Combrix and, uh, and then uh, we all help each other in terms of helping with network design and so on. So we'd be happy to help you. Reach out to anyone you feel appropriate. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what region you're in, you can just pick one and we will help you. Okay. With that, I will end the uh, webinar. Thank you again. You will be getting an uh, email follow-up with us with a link to uh, view it again. And in the future, we hope to be doing more of these. Uh, we are in discussions now about what's next. So if you have ideas, also uh, hit me up on my email with those ideas as well. Thanks again and have a great day.